13th, and if you're wondering why it feels so weird out there today, stick around. We are Astro Mondays, and we are coming live with Christopher Witecki, my sensei to serious joy, uh, the person who's taught me more about astrology and helped me decode the human body with his step system. We're coming live. We're going to be having conversations, and we're going to be bringing a few people up. This is going to be an interesting day because today is a spicy day. Let's just say it that way. Looking forward to... <clears throat> Looking forward to uh, uh, the questions today. If you have questions, put down where you're from uh, in the comments. Hello, Growth with Jackie. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> and put in the comments if you have questions. Hey, The Rock 510. Um, and hey, Mora from Sacramento. Uh, another Gemini coming in. Doot, doot, doot. Wow, this is going to be an interesting one today with what happened earlier. I can only imagine what it's going to feel like today. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to uh, Christopher Witecki coming live here soon. Hey, Pamela Brewer. Hey, New Jersey. <clears throat> hey, Kara from New uh, Zealand. Welcome, Scotland. Whoa, Long Island. I'm a Gemini also, The Rock. Gemini, when's your birthday, The Rock? When is your birthday? What type of Gemini are you? Syracuse, New York. Sardinia is here. You know, uh, Gisela is from Sardinia. Gisela, if you want to go back and talk about energetic healing, go back a couple of, uh, go back to last week on Friday and you look at Gisela Carta from Divine Light Crystals. Looking forward to it. Waiting for Christopher with Decky to come live. You guys, so a little bit about this. If you want to sign up for Serious Joy, the app, I suggest you do it. It's worth it. Try it for four bucks for the first month. If you don't like it, get rid of it. Um, and no commitments. What I have noticed is that astrology is a really powerful tool, but it's only a powerful tool if it's used daily. If it's not used daily, then it's just like an information source. It's kind of like, it rained last week. Oh, great, it rained last week. But if it tells you it's going to rain today, then, then that's when you're going to get it. So you go to the link in our, in our bio or you go to our web page and you can sign up for Serious Joy. Sign it up for four bucks a month. Try it out. Um, it has changed my life. The seven messages per day have made a massive difference. Some say that Serious Joy, <clears throat> my, my life has changed so much in learn, learning about astrology. Christopher Witecki. Hello, you sir. Doing? Good to see you. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday. And man, was this a crazy weekend with that Gemini on the weekend on Saturday? It was like people were going crazy. Uh, I agree. I think it started Friday night. Um, yeah. I don't know if you felt the anxiousness, but fr Friday and the Saturday was a huge shift of energy. Yeah. We even I had, think... for the first time ever, we're leaving the airport and they had customs border control checking people who are leaving the country. I've never seen that ever before in my life. Oh, no kidding. Huh? Yeah. And I was like, what is uh, today's a Gemini day and everybody was anxious and freaking out. And then of course, uh, the, there's some, there's some guys who are a little bit wealthier. that were just high as a kite or, or drunk, whatever they were, because I'm like, yeah, I used to be like that too on days like this, but today I've got a calmness because I knew it was a Gemini day. I knew not to get in my head about it. I was already in my head about it. And Mercury had just stationed direct the, on Friday before. So it was. Oh, hold on there a second. Sure. You froze for a minute. Oh, did I? Okay. I was, um, I was just talking about Mercury direct too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You said Mercury direct as soon as you said it. Uh, the electronics <laughs> right out. Mercury was uh, hearing you. So what are you saying? Mercury went station direct? Mercury station direct on Friday. And I think Saturday was the first Mercury day since Mercury station direct. So it was, it, I likened it to sort of like being on an old school bus and grinding gears. It was like we sort of felt it all clunk in a gear, you know, as far as our, our mental attitude. I think it's my fault that something went wrong. I just got a notice from my internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We should hey, be good so, um, here in a second. Sorry yeah, about that, folks. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, um, so I, I got I got a lot of questions today because I want to dig into some stuff. Okay, and, let's do it. And I want to use these sessions to learn more from you because, you know, like um, 
I talk to you every day and you tell me stuff for years and, and it helped me get through my process. I mean, if it wasn't for talking to you from 2018 through to 2020, if it wasn't talk, for talking to you every day, I probably would have jumped off a cliff, burnt myself out. I wouldn't have made the right decisions. Well, thank, and, thank you, brother. And, and, you know, and, and part of it is, is that it was, learning to, it was learning to have trust in the fact that things are working out. And, and right, and and having when when shit coming down, it having something on the outside explain why things were happening, took at least fifty to seventy five percent of the pain away. Yes, absolutely. That's like the number one benefit. Thank you for promoting our service at the start of this. But like, I think that's the number one benefit of the service is that you realize you're not crazy. That everyone's going through the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I go straight on myself. Thing. So I have a question. I have a, I have a VIP guest in the chat right now okay. and okay. she's a 29 degree Gemini. Ooh. Or sorry, 29 degree, um, uh, um, uh, Pisces. And oh, okay. I know and, a lot of those actually. Yeah. 29 degree <laughs> Pisces. And it's I a Pisces those. day. Today is a Pisces day. Yes, it is. And she woke up like crying in the middle of the night and with all these emotions coming out and with that 29 degree is just embodying it all. Why would that be like, why would this Pisces be like absolutely being beat the crap out, getting the crap beat out of her today? On a Pisces day? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Pisces is really good at delusion. Uh, when I say that, I mean that in the kindest way, like they can sweep things under the rug and forget about them. They really rule the subconscious by nature. So Pisces have more under the surface, like an iceberg than they have above the surface. But when the planet plays your tune and plays your sign number, the step number, then it opens you up. It opens up that channel from underneath. So I imagine it all came spewing up like a volcano of stuff that she's been sort of holding on for a while. Plus the sun is in Virgo right now, the opposite of Pisces. So this is what I call your anti-birthday when it's your the opposite sign of you, it's your anti-birthday. So you're sort of the most removed from yourself than you are in the entire year. So it's kind of a wonky time, but then she sort of rubber band back on this net seven yeah. day. And, and then for the next four days, she's going to most likely feel like something's building because it's the anti-birthday. And on the 29th degree of, of Virgo, yes. then, then it's going to be like, because she is a 29 degree. She's going to like, yes. I predict that on the 29th or the day after zero degree, it's going to be, okay, I got this. I figured it out. Is I that agree. usually what that? Yes. What happens is on your anti-birthday, you're 100 percent, you're 180 degrees away from your normal consciousness. So it's sort of like seeing yourself on camera. You finally can sort of see and understand and face yourself in ways that when you're subjective in the seat, in the driver's seat, you don't normally see. So, yeah, the days building up to your birthday are always crisis and the days building up to your anti-birthday are always crisis as well, because it's just it's sort of stuff swelling up ready for release. Right, right. Right. So kind of like, uh, don't sweat it, buckle down. You've got four more days of, of, of like this roller coaster ride. And, and instead of, instead of fighting it, go in, dive into it and have fun with it, knowing that it's, that this is part of the journey. Swim with the current. Yeah. I mean, I think that's true for all 29s. You have to, the nine is your ego and the two is your emotion. So when you're back, when your ego is to the, you know, puts your back to your emotions and suddenly you feel like you're on this horrible ride. But when you turn your ego to face your own feelings and just go with them, that's when you come into your integrity. So it's usually because you're resisting feelings. A 29 is resisting the feelings. Oh. It's making it worse. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I, know, I mean, who am I talking to? I'm talking to you too, right? We're, we go oh, on the same way. Resisting feelings. Yeah, they're no fun. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> But it's, it's, it's the biggest part, you know, like as far as uh, the states of awareness are concerned, the moon is the closest planet to us, if you want to call it a planet. And, uh, and so it has the biggest influence. That's the loudest state of awareness is our emotions. And, and, and I, I've also found that being a 29 degree and with all the 29s, I have a group of 29 degrees that I meet with and I watch and I chat with. I find that being 29, everything works out. It always happens in the last minute, eleventh yes. hour, fifth, ninth minute. Yes. And I stress I used to stress about it every second up until that last minute. And then would work out anyways. And I'm going like, what am I beating myself up? And then I would do it again and again and again. And it just starts over. So you have meetings with twenty nine degree people. Do you guys all go rushing in a minute before the meeting, like getting stuck in the door jam, trying to pretty <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a twenty nines of every sun sign 
uh, meeting on a, and we've got a chat group and I've been observing the behavior of 29 because what yes, I wanted yes. to do is I wanted to understand myself and I got Lisa doing a 25 group and, and I suggest everybody find, find your other degree and talk to them because I found more value. Like at first I was finding 29 degree Sages and I found them all and they're all like me. So I don't see, I don't, I can see stuff, but I don't really see stuff. Then I got uh, a 29 uh, Gemini and I saw it. Then I got a Pisces and I see different versions of me, but through the other signs, the other 12 states of awareness. So, yeah. and I found that the, the numbers mean more to me about astrology than the actual signs. I don't find the signs are as useful as you're a 14 degree or you're an eight degree or something like that. Yeah, I agree. I think the step number of the degree is sort of like the final six inches or six feet of the personality. So it's really what we, it's the, it's what we mostly see is people's step number. And I get along super with other 18s. We're like two peas in a pod. Yeah. But I've never had a whole group of 18s. That would be interesting. Do you well, I, find... I purposely did it. I, you remember, I, cause I had the conversation with you. I, I was trying to understand astrology in a new way. Like I understand the body. Cause I was looking at a way to understand the body. So I was looking at astrology and said, I remember talking to you, what if I took and put a ruler, 12 rulers on top of each other and punch 29 holes down them. And I said, would each one of those holes relate to the other, other person in that segment more than the sign? Because I was trying to, I was saying, well, how come not all cancers, like I'm working on, I can see the physical problems in their body, but how come they all deal with me differently? Like I could see that all cancers had the same physical issues in the body. They had their intestines, they're all Pisces. They, had, they got issues with their feet. Like I could see that and their throat. Yeah. I could see that in, in the in the signs, but I couldn't I, I couldn't see how to talk to them. And that's why I was looking for that another way. I couldn't understand. And you started your whole career um, uh, online doing uh, matching, like dating matching, right? Um, no, I don't recall love that. Love and Lust Report. Sure no, I meant the oh, Love and Lust Report. Oh, yeah, Love and Lust Report. Yes, Isn't yes, that yes. What, as I remembered, isn't that what's, what you said? I have to look at something more because they should go together, but they don't always. You're talking about the 29s now? I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Well, you're I'm, 29 just, me. I don't I'm know saying more about the degrees. I think that, <laughs> ah. I, that as I remember it, you were, you were looking at it and saying, why doesn't uh, two signs that should go together, why don't they go together? Oh, and right, to right. The story. I do think it's the same. I do think it's the step number at the end of the day. I totally agree. Like, look at the step number. It's sort of like, the, you know, if you think of an iceberg mostly underwater. Again, that same analogy. The step number is the, top, the, the part that's on top, the part that we see and the part we relate to. And at the end of the day, it's your root intention. So it, it's the root intention, the net number, what you add to, that's what you're always, that's the most important part of your life. And for you, it's integrity and how information comes together. Net 11, 29s. Yeah, so, so if somebody wants to understand the steps, I want to remind them that last year, we did a massively in-depth, or not last year, last week on Monday, uh, which is on our wall, we did a massively in-depth description of the step numbers, which gave me an education even further past what I already knew. So I encourage everybody to go back and, and watch that because this content that we're creating is really not just talking. We're helping people learn astrology in a new way. Building a foundation. So you're, so the step number, last week we talked about the steps in themselves, like zero through, through 11. But part of the magic of the step system is that you, when you, you take your degree of your sign and you add them together, and that's what we call the net step. And that net step is the root intention, the motivator of everything in your life. I think that every time you sit down, every time you eat, every time you go to sleep, you are trying to fulfill the net step, which I call a root intention. And so when you say you have a group of 29s, what they all share is that same desire, that same root intention, and it's variations of that same theme. Right. And I put a bunch of zeros in there too, just so I could see the other side of it. Oh, that's interesting. You know why that's interesting is because I think when you're 29, you have to be in, you have to, you always pay attention to the next step number because you're always one step heading, preparing for the next step. And what's interesting is 29 is the only one that's preparing for the beginning again, zero. Right. Back to zero. And the yeah. zero is the only one that came from the 29. Yeah, precisely. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I figured it was you. like tying a string together. If I'm going to tie a string together, I want to know what both ends of the rope looks like. Because if I know what both ends, I can figure out the rope. That was my philosophy. I think that's brilliant. And I think uh, and it's necessary, too, because 29 can lose themselves. That's why you want to look back down at your feet, back down at the zero, back down at who you are, because you're on top of a mountain. Yeah. I find 29s are 
always successful at something and 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 it depends on where you measure them in their life sometimes they're successful at like creating havoc and shit like i was for a while i i was successfully driving myself into a wall for a while and 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 i was good at it and i was successfully then not driving myself into a wall and there wasn't a lot of in between yeah 29s are always pushing the envelope and that would be pushing the envelope of destruction <laughs> pushing the envelope of dysfunction pushing the envelope of of innovation they're always pushing they're always pushing and they're a yeah. little they come across not as pushy but they're just adding a few more molecules than you would expect so it's just always something's going to pop as a result okay so this week Weekend uh, that just passed was really weird. What were we going through? And then what are we facing this week coming up? Because it feels intense it, to me in a good way, but intense. It is intense. So we've been building up in all of, uh, all of Virgo energies about what you end up becoming, who you become to yourself as the first decade, what your life day, daily life becomes at the second decade. And now we're in the third decade, which is what does your lifestyle become? And the, the aha moment was over the weekend. Ideally over the weekend, you probably came to a realization of what your life needs to become, you know? And this is somewhat mundane. Like I need to become better slept. I need to become working less. I need to have a lifestyle that becomes the foundation of my success. Um, and so this, um, this week, you're gonna commit to what your lifestyle, what you want your lifestyle to do. And this commitment to a new lifestyle, a new way of life, the sun is going to oppose Neptune, uh, so we're going to end up choosing a new spiritual timeline. So in essence, this is a big week because we choose a new spiritual destiny. What, is, uh, what you, is that? When you say choose a new timeline or a new spiritual destiny for somebody who is not following that, what is that? How does that show up in my world? Like, what would it look like in your opinion? Uh, well, you, spiritual destiny. So the way to look at spiritual destiny is to look at the essence of what your life has been about. So, for instance, if you we go through chapters, and I believe these are things that our soul wants to learn. So I believe that when we're in heaven or pre pre manifest, we say to ourselves, "I want to learn to appreciate this. I want to get closer to this person." You have all these desires that you want, these timelines, and that's what we call as a timeline in our work. It's a spiritual timeline, and it's you can know it's spiritual because it plays out everywhere. Right. So it's like you may have a theme, let's say, of low self-esteem that you feel bad about yourself. That's an essence that plays out in your job. It plays out in your relationships. It plays out in the things that you make and the things that you do. And so we go the full 360 of understanding that essence, that that lesson. And then we finally let go of it. What's happening right now, which is really unique in our lifetime, the only time it's happened in our lifetime, is we have Saturn in the beginning of Pisces and Neptune at the top of Pisces. So we're making commitments to ourselves to, to stop certain spiritual lessons with ourself. So if you have a spiritual lesson, for instance, to respect yourself or to honor yourself or to pull yourself out of depression, once you, you may have a timeline uh, of lifestyle that is based on always being depressed, manifesting events in your life that make you depressed, you know, getting fired from your job, your partner leaving you. It's all based on that core of how you feel like a loser. And so you're manifesting this timeline of being, let's say, a loser or always losing. When you finally overcome that part of yourself and you go, I'm, I'm not a loser. I don't care what the world thinks. I'm, I'm going to honor who I really am and rise above this. Then what happens, I believe, is the law of attraction changes and you switch railroad tracks. You were on the timeline of manifestation based on feeling low self-esteem. But once you recognize your value, then suddenly your timeline shifts and you're on to a new story with new characters, new plot, new, new adventures. And, so and, and it just shows thoughts. up, right? It just yes. shows up. Like you don't even know you switched unless, because what I've noticed is like, this person, this situation was like this, and all of a sudden it's like they're like this, yes. and they're different. Without me yeah. doing anything, people literally morphing and changing in front of me, personality, attitude, opportunities, problems, either more or less in certain situations. But for me, it seems like everything is less. Yeah, less of what, less of the past, <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's like they get the memo. It's really pretty crazy. And in fact, you you kind of wonder. It's like, is this my my interpretation of them, or is or have things really changed? It's not often that we change these essences of life, these spiritual core values of life, or core uh, patterns of life. But we happen to be in a major core pattern change. So I think for most people, we're going to find ourselves in a very different world here by Scorpio. Scorpio is when you'll actually see the change that we're making and now.
And, and and then what are we coming into this week? Like, what is what is the what is it going to feel like? Because we're coming up to the 29th degree this week, so it should be it should be like tearing some people apart. I think this is like a launch. I mean, if you're if you're being torn apart, you're holding on to the past. Okay, good so point. The people who are resisting are getting torn apart. The people who are clinging and demanding that the old ways stay the same, who don't have faith. There is a bit of faith here, but this, this week is really on your mark, get ready, go. It's really a launch. And today we are praying before the launch. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the prayer. Like, God, please don't kill me in this launch. Or am I doing the right thing? Is this the right, do I feel this is the right way? Today is when really you comprehend your spiritual story that is ending and the spiritual story that's beginning. And for instance, you know, a lot of time. here's something for you, I think. There was a time when you went from the story of struggle to the story of ease. Yes. And you went to that, you went to that change since I've known you. Yeah, actually. When I met you, you were fairly still in recently, the Fairly yeah. recently, because it was, and in between struggle to ease, there was this period where things would come up and I would have all ready for the struggle and then they would work out anyways. And then I'm like, why? And, and that period was about two years of me, you're like, oh, ready to fight, ready to have a problem, and then it working out. And then yeah. it changed last year um, in Scorpio. It all freaking changed. It's like everything I touched worked for the first time in my life because everything I touched didn't work, and I had to figure out 10 other ways to make it work. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So if you want to have like a three-month perspective here, Virgo is when we say, okay, I want a new life. And usually in a Virgo, it's usually an upgrade, sort of like an upgrade of an operating system, you know, on your phone or something, you sort of download a new operating system in Virgo. Um, but now we're moving to a whole new platform this particular year, just due to the nature of the sun opposing Neptune. This is a whole new platform with new features and new aspects. So you, you sign up for it in Virgo, then in Libra, you pick your teammates. So it's like, okay, these people are on the same new lifestyle. These people are leaving. There's going to be a lot of changing of partners, a lot of do -si doing a lot of bowing to your partners and saying goodbye in the square dance of this next Libra. And then Scorpio is when you flip the switch. That is when the actual switch happens. And then we go into Sag, it's the birth of the new story. So we are birthing an entirely new story by December this year. One that you've, I don't think we've ever lived in our whole life. I believe that no one will be left behind in this sense. Uh, I think people get pulled in uh, to the new because everyone else changes. So if you refuse to change, you just see everyone else around you leaving and, and yeah. moving on. So you're left yeah. behind. So it's, it's yeah, like I believe that everybody, everybody gets a chance to, uh, to go to the new school this year. But if they, if they don't realize it, uh, they might go to the new school, think it's the old school for a while. Oh yeah. Yeah. And th that is always the case. So they're kind of complaining. It's like, hello, get with the times. <laughs> like, this is a nothing burger now, man. And you find yourself, you know, in that position. So I've, I've been uh, left behind before, <laughs> like, Yeah, you know, and had to, and had to catch up. So this, this week has another feature too. The sun opposes Neptune, which is an annual feature, but this year the sun opposes Neptune at step 26, which is, a, which means it's a decision. It's a commitment that we want our life to change. So the way this is in an eternal sense is, I'm tired of suffering. I am tired of struggle. I am tired of living the hard life. I'm, I'm ready to let it go. We're gonna commit, I'm gonna let that go. And that's letting that story go and letting all the variations of that theme go. And then the sun will trine Pluto at 27 Capricorn, which is a very important trine because that is the death of a power situation in your life. Um, and that's rare. We've never had this in our lifetime. Um, Pluto 27, it's a, it's the last time was the American revolution. That's just where this is part of why I've been saying to people, shit changes starting this month. It's like uh, the world is changing. And by the way, we're feeling it. We were scheduled to do some travel. And then all of a sudden we had some weird stuff come up, uh, with visas and Canadian passports. And I'm like, Oh, here it is. Okay. Got you. Interesting. That's the first sign. Thank you. That I've, I've, I felt it this whole time. I think something major is going to happen. Well, the United States Pluto and Pluto is like your dumbest spot in your chart. So wherever Pluto is, this is where you are the most ignorant. So the United States is having a return of its ignorance basically is what happens the first time in the United States history. And this ignorance is over the proper use of power. 
<laughs> the proper use of power. So we are going to face our ignorance around the proper use of power starting this week. Pluto goes to 27 tomorrow. This is the last time it'll be at 27, which is the natal Pluto of the United States for the rest of our life. It will never go back to 27 again. It goes direct to 27. So I'm actually predicting we just my team and I, we just uh, looked at the first week of October. It looks like some major fireworks happened the first week of October as far as uh, probably a lot of unexpected events. I, I'll just say right here, I imagine we're going to see a change in presidential candidates. That's my prediction. A change yeah, I, in I mean, I, I think that I think that and I think that's that's at one level. And then as you get there, that whole system between if I believe that our governments are even run fairly and all that stuff. I mean, that's a whole other system because I've just I've I, I know I came from that world. I came from protecting secrets in that world, and I, I, I now know in my belief system, what I've seen, it's all corrupt. So above that, it's almost like a drama. It's like watching a drama. It's like watching a soap opera or a telenovela. Like I, I, know, I know that there's drama. I know shit's going to happen, but it's like watching it on TV. That's the way I, I feel about it today. Oh, I, I think that's we're all we're all captive audience to that bad reality series. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> it's just the reality show that's like that won't stop uh but it's interesting how there it's interesting how you do see major plot turns like covid was very clear in the astrology pluto conjunct saturn i was warning against it for six months i couldn't tell what it was going to be but i knew there was going to be a major power grab that's what the planet said a major actually to be honest to put this full circle it was in january 12 2020 that's when i that saturn remember that joined. january 15th i said i have to be out of the united states i rushed out of the united states in december i i couldn't even finish everything i literally i took one bag and left yeah you felt it and yeah. i remember telling you i'm like well buddy i don't know what it is but like the planets say yes there's yeah. like something coming down i felt it you confirmed it as soon as you confirmed it i'm like there's no way i'm hanging around here and i'm glad i left yeah um, and we had a last minute impeachment of Trump, which I was like, and then it turned out, it turned out to be, you know, patient zero with COVID. Yeah. Looks yeah. like we yeah, and, froze and, for a second. And that yeah, was exactly, that was exactly on the 15th. That was the date. And I had been dreaming about that date. And I remember you called me and you said, Hey, what do you think? And I said, 15th. And you go, okay, that's it. I'm confirmed. And we both were able to, to bounce off of each other. And that's why I appreciate our relationship because I get feelings sometimes that have no basis, and I just go on that feeling. I appreciate it because you're you mad scientists with me and look at things that look ridiculous to the other people. But I'm like, no, I think this is what's going on, man. <laughs> like, so interestingly enough, that was that was the beginning of a a power capture. So so in other words, going for power. You know, back in the night in the American Revolution, the Great Britain was also trying to take power over the colonies you know, raising the Stamp Act and all these different things because the colonists were being insubordinate and the colonists were working to find their independence. So there was a power struggle. The same is true. So that power struggle began January 12, 2020. And then and the next real page of that starts this week, like literally unfolds this week. Yeah. And, and January 12th. And then there's a perception cycle, which I say is three days. And that's the 15th. That's when we finally got our perception around what had really happened. I always wait for three days for bad news um, or good news. Yeah, it takes. Um, <clears throat> when it happens and when you realize they're two different things. I think, you know, rolling black back, it, it looked like the first COVID infected people came to the United States on that week of January 12th, January 15th, but yeah. we didn't shut down till March. So it was a three month, <laughs> right? three month wake up cycle, which well, makes sense because Pluto's slow. Yeah. And and we're also in the third dimension and it's all about belief and you got to hit them on that third month because that's when belief you start you have something you've got to give people three months to believe it you know and that's what i found i that's why i love your step system because like i follow that it's like oh yeah yeah you're not gonna feel it for three days or for three months because it makes sense it's like i have to go through i have to go through what whoops we had a moment there but they're not and how does it feel? And then, or sorry, how does it feel? And then I have to go into whether I believe it or not. Yeah, ironically, you and I are having Mercury retrograde issues three days after Mercury went straight direct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just my mind just cut off here a second ago, right? I minded too. Yeah. yeah.
exactly. <laughs> That's funny. So, so, so we got, so basically we, we got some stuff. So the, the best advice to people to deal with what's happening between now and the time we talk next week is what? So I really believe that the way the world's going to change is if people come into their potential. That's my personal belief. I think that if everyone starts coming into their potential and starts blooming everywhere, it's going to throw off the other factions of life that are trying to, you know, trying to c control whatever that may be, whether Beast is trying to control you or whatever. So being yourself is important. It looks like creating the lifestyle, you want to launch the lifestyle that will support your brightest self. That's what you want to do this week, whatever that lifestyle is. <clears throat> so this is the old vintage of fake it till you make it, except it's not fake it. It's, it's be it. Go ahead and start to be, you know, that, that YouTube, you know, influencer, go ahead and start to be these things and practice it and work it out um, and, and get it started because it's going to take some, some practice. You know, what's going to happen is we take our power back is what happens. Go ahead. I would say, you know, what's funny is, is that we have all these people that are starting to, you know, get out there and do lives like, like, like I do, and then create content and contribute all these content contributors that are starting to create content. And they're like being it right now. And it just out of nowhere, we noticed it because also out of nowhere, we've got like 20 or 30 people contributing to us because we have this worldwide mission to hit a billion people. We're in the hundreds of millions this year. And we want to hit a billion people affected by the end of this year. And the only way we can do it is if we've got 20 or 30 or 50 other voices. And it's all happening right now. People are rising. That's brilliant. I actually saw I actually saw someone that had like their name and then they had Human Garage on it too on a video. And I was like, what? What is this? Like it was some practitioner. I don't remember what they were doing. But, oh, it was someone on an air. Someone showing someone how to do your, your ear maneuver to release. Yeah. Uh, tension in the head yeah so what we, and i was like well this is so what we do is you know science. all of our intellectual property is open source so we want you to take it learn it put it into your program we have hospitals using it we have wow. uh, trauma release programs we worked with children's hospital last uh, uh, la last year we had we have trauma programs that are using it we have doctors and practitioners we have hundreds of thousands of doctors and practitioners that now prescribe it we have orthopedic surgeons prescribing wow. it beforehand so people don't have to go to surgery or after for recovery. And we just, and we say, whatever your program is, build it. And if you get big enough or want help, come to us and we'll help. We'll certify it. We'll stamp it once you do it. But we, it's like, we couldn't even build the engine fast enough right now because there's about 20 million people doing this weekly. And, wow. and so the only way we could do it is we can say, go out here, here's the tools, here's some basic format. When you get big enough, let us know and we'll, we'll come in and help some more. It's a smart way to go, bro. And, and I and I see it happening. So I, I guess people are stepping into that and becoming this new voice. Which you're supposed which to great. right now, right? Yes. This is the time. Like, you want to launch whatever life that you want to live. You want to launch that life this week. And, like, and whatever you, that is. So here's a life, you know, like, um, the last four years have been very much like my previous 50 years, which is work 80 hours a week. And the I we found a way to make this work our lifestyle so that I get healthier. I've been getting healthier as I've done it. But the truth is I want to go and explore this world. Ah. And, and I don't, I don't want to work 80 hours a week anymore. I want, I want to do this. I want to, I want to get on and focus my energy on people that are really helping other people. And, and, and I don't care. There's that. I mean, I've no desire for the money. I have only desire to experience this world and help other people. And this is where this week um, we're, we're, we just happen to be back in Cancun. The, 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 and, and this is more the lifestyle that I, I like to live, by the way. Cancun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I just saw the green and assumed we were in Canada. But <laughs> like, OK, that's awesome. So you are becoming the new life then. Yes. You literally are living it. I felt, you know, what is, I felt uh, I felt happy, which is really weird. I felt this really happy to be here and to be me um over the weekend which is not a normal state for me i'm always i've never i've never been happy with me i've always wanted to be better and and i was just really happy with being me for the first time in my life well that's brilliant was i happy being me no <laughs> <laughs> when is human garage's birthday do you know i mean you've had like several births yeah we but... have different versions of it um we were so uh we have we have a community birthday was the sixth degree of um sixth degree of cancer but okay. we have a, an incorporated birthday actually oh shoot when was it 
Um, it was in, oh, man, I have to look again. But okay. I, I, for, for whatever reason, I know I can't get it in my head, but we, what we did is we had two birthdays in the new human garage 2.0. One of them was, it, it was to bring balance to community. And we called that our annual, our annual year. The year, the new year that we celebrate is six degree cancer. And then we okay. have the incorporation year. That's the year we were born. So we have the year we we're born and we have the year that we celebrate because we, we wanted to bring balance back to community. And so we chose that date specifically. And actually that date chose us, we knew. That was also the date that I realized my progression into Capricorn, seven degree Capricorn. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's right. You and I are both progressed to sevens this year. <laughs> this is our spiritual year. Pretty amazing, actually, that we're we're really in tune because this is a very much a seven year with Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. So we're really blessed as sevens. Yeah. It tells me that we are. Yeah, it's a good thing. Well, we were. You know, it, it's funny because uh, I mean, we we literally started this journey together. We you were building you were building the app and the process behind it. I was starting with the Rubin Science Center. And we yes. came together and we've been trying to and working together and doing stuff. Now it's going on. Um, it's going on our 11th year. So this is our Virgo year. This is our we become oh, year. That's interesting. Yeah, that's probably true for me, too, actually. It is um, true for you. I remember. Yeah. If you include if you include pre-production. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like because, I mean, that was pre other like, Rubenstein Center was pre-production. It was before Human Garage. But that was I had to I had to go through that to get to this spot. And that's when you were starting i remember uh starting to do the lives i remember where one of the things is you want rubenstein to come on a sunday and he's like no I, I i don't do sundays and i'm like man you're like you're killing me dude yeah he was he had his his uh quirkiness <laughs> we'll say that it was but that you, you expect that with brilliant people though so it's yeah he was brilliant. he was he was he was extremely brilliant brilliant i learned a lot from him yeah but that you know and that's why i'm here today is because of that quirkiness which is really really cool so so we kate i want to ask another question so yeah, we we've kind of got been. prepared for this week yep um so basically to be in this week is to just stay centered stay balanced uh keep our stress down this is why we tell people to do the stress reset or the organ reset on a daily basis or multiple times a day if they're feeling this intensity i tell them to do the organ reset uh, because that takes the intensity down by 50 to 70 percent i tell them to do that a couple times a day it only takes five to seven minutes and so we're going into um so we're going we got that going into next week and then we'll talk next week so i'd like to use some time here to, uh next last 20 minutes i want to understand more about the houses and, okay. and what does that mean and how does that house system affect me okay so uh, the houses in your natal chart is what you're referring to and, and the different yeah. houses that you have planets in. So the houses turn out to be where things are. Our life gets in, it ends up getting housed in a certain compartment of our of ourself. Uh, and there are 12 houses for 12 signs and the, the 12 signs each rule a house. So they actually rule a state of awareness. The first house is the most popular house. That is your ascendant, known as your rising sign. And, and that is literally how you express yourself in the world. So that is where all of your actions and all of your behavior take place, how you interact, your persona, the way you present yourself as far as an image is concerned, what's your hairstyle, what's your dress style, that's all first house, what's your response like? So, and, and the sign that is on the cusp of the house is the ruling sign or the ruling state of awareness, or you could say the ruling step number. So um, you have nine days, Aries. Have Aries. Yeah, yeah, 21 so you, degree. Which, Sagittarius Aries. So you're different because you're sort of a purebred in the sense that you have the ruling sign over the ruling house. Aries is the natural ruler of the first house, and you have an Aries on uh, an Aries complement to that. And you said it's at nine degrees. I know 21 degrees Sagittarius. Okay, so 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 a 21 is the teacher. Yeah. Basically, so so your expression of your all of your actions everything are ruled by this teacher modality that the and really because of the equal system the same step number rules every house so you're a teacher when it comes to behavior you're a teacher when it comes to money the second house your teacher when it comes to communication the third house it goes all the way around that if you use the it equal system it would have been yeah. so simple if i would have understood that like 20 years ago yeah well you know teacher starts off as researcher and 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 adventurer so in the early ages, it's just that you're on an adventure. 
or you're out researching and learning like crazy. And then when you reach a certain maturity, you turn around and call yourself a teacher because you're the wise one. Right. So, so when you look at your natal chart or your astrology, whatever planets you have in that first house are all activated by your ego. They're the planets that you act on the most, the planets that you respond from the most, the planets that inspire your actions the most. So I have the moon in the first house. So my emotions uh, inspire almost all my behavior, which is why right. I'm a dork. Right, exactly. <laughs> too so you know people can see how i feel it's real hard for me to hide how i'm feeling because my moon is in the first house whatever plants are in the first house kind of you show your cards as a result uh so that's step nine right. the, the second house i'm going over the houses the second house is where all of your values live so your you're, and these are all states of awareness so what are my actions my behavior what are my values which is step 10. value is what you're going to put time and energy into it's your money, it's your debt, where you have where you have signed away your money, you know, for the future. It is what you produce, what you manufacture, what you manifest in life. Uh, it is business, it is revenue stream, um, and it is values in the sense of I value freedom. Or I value, so I actually, if you have Aquarius in the second house cusp, you value freedom, right? Uh, I have Virgo in the second house cusp, so I value details. <laughs> like, I value the, the specifics of life. Right. I don't so I don't even know your, what mine is. Well, yours would be Taurus. So you value values. So that's the thing about you. You have, because you have Aries, the ruling sign in the ruling house there, everything is a purebred for you. Oh, so, so everything is, okay. So every house is, oh, that makes so much. It, now I understand it. Okay, now I get it because I couldn't, because everybody else is mixed up and I am the same in each one. I didn't get that. Which is very, very 29. It makes it super. So it's super Aries, super second house, super communication, super emotion, super, 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 because there's nothing diffusing it or filtering or uh, holding back. There's no contrary energy. So you don't have like any blankets on top of you. So if you, if you have another sign, which, you know, most of us do, you're the rarity, you're the exception, not the rule. Most people have a different sign that manages that part of themselves. Right. Okay, which is good. why we're so complex and why astrology is so complex. Right. So uh, I have Leo manage my expression. So when I, you know, my hair, it's all Leo, it's flamboyant, it's bright colors. It's, you know, Leo is what manages my expression. Virgo manages my, my, my finances. So I'm super meticulous and very detail oriented in all my projects and everything I do to the point of overkill. Yeah to the point of 29. Yeah. <laughs> so the second house is value. The third house is your communication, your intellect, your thinking. So it's how you talk to yourself. It's what your relationship to your self-talk is, what's your relationship to how you communicate, your frame of mind with other people, what you spend time thinking about. Do you, call, do you communicate or not communicate? And the highest spectrum, the third decan is like intellectual property. So authors, speakers, poets, um, computer programmers, people who are anal analysts for a living, you know, they'll find their son or their Mercury in the high degrees of the third house uh, because they, they're just super brainy and super cerebral. Sure. So a lot of people live in their third. And usually when you have mental health disorders, it'll come up in the third house sure. for sure. Um, the fourth house then is your home family and foundation. So it is your emotions, how you feel how you nurture yourself, how you were raised. Um, it is your home life, your nurturing rituals. So eating and sleeping. And um, it is the home that you build, your, your environment of home, what you call home, you know, and, and what rules your home. Uh, and, what, and so this would be where your childhood, your childhood memories would be there. Um, and the fourth house is the very bottom of, of the chart. So that means that emotions are the foundation of life is what that says. Yes. according to male astrology. So this is why emotions is so important. We're going back to that big old moon and the fastest moving state of awareness. Well, you know, emotions, I say this to people all the time, we used to think the brain moved the body, but it's not true because the body won't move until it has a desire, which is an emotion. So emotions are the, are the predecessor and movement, uh, the origin of all movement is breath. So emotions are why we breathe. Oh, that's fascinating. And I feel like, I feel emotion is also complex consciousness. So like one drop of emotion can turn into a 500 page yeah. book. It is just rich with awareness, the history, every other time you felt emotional like that. So the neural net of this motion connected okay. to that motion. I got to tell you this then. Yeah. So the 
organs are our emotions. They connect to the midbrain, the limbic region in the brain. And the organs are like anger for liver, uh, desire for stomach. Well, the organs communicate with, um, they have an internetwork, an intranet made with olfactory nerve endings, uh, nerve cells. Oh, okay. Olfactory nerve cells are the most rich because they have smell, sight, sound, and taste. They have a feeling associated to them. So that makes perfect sense. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I love putting the body piece together of how the body is this amazing expression of how consciousness works. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I think emotion is. So I honestly think, you know, this is I honestly think this is the biggest problem. You want to get philosophical. What's the problem with the world? People do not know how to manage their emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's it's polluting everything, health, everything. Yeah. Um, so it really is the most important thing. And ironically, we're told it's the least important thing. We're told to put them aside. You're being too, you know, sensitive. You know, for men, you're being effeminate. If you listen to your emotions, like we're talked out of them. And yeah, really we're, talked the into, we're talked into brain dominant masculine approach. And the brain dominant model is why we're so sick in our bodies. Because the brain does not move the body. Emotion moves the body. Emotion comes from external source, from stimulus. I have a stimulus and, and that stimulus says, am I okay? That's the first one. And that's the narrative, but that stimulus creates an emotion, which is either fear or desire. And then from there, am I okay? And if I'm okay, then I go into, okay, then what is it? What is it that I feel? And this is the hierarchy that we, we've rebuilt the entire human experience based on this hierarchy. Mm. Brilliant. And I agree. I think the mind, I think we're talking to the mind because of mind control. A mind can be programmed. Right. Um, yeah. Whereas That's emotions, how can, emotions can be conditioned, but not programmed, Correct. which is a very different, different, different person. One person asked, can, what happens if you have an empty house? I'll just answer that question for your viewers. Like, um, there are no empty houses. That's what my astrology teacher told me. Th there may not be a planet in there, but your conscious awareness is there. So houses that are not em that are empty so to speak in your chart are ones that you haven't prioritized as more important they're they're less important to the soul you you have no chess pieces on those so could that be something that i've already learned the lesson i don't need to i don't need to spend any time there i could be or it could be like ah that's boring i hate that every lifetime i don't want to do it, <laughs> <laughs> it can also it could be the same thing it could be that you've mastered it in a past life and you're done with it. It could be that you're not interested in it. like Or you're so ignoring it and you're about to get your ass handed to you. Yes, that's usually what happens. You know, like you want to look at, especially when you have planets on the opposite side. So like I have three planets in the 10th and no planets in the 4th. So I'm top heavy. I don't have a lot of, you know, energy focusing on my feelings, which is why I have stumbled and dropped the ball a few times in life because I wasn't focusing on that root structure of my emotional foundation. Yeah, fair statement. Um, fair statement. So then we go on to five. Five is your heart, which is Leo. So this is your relationship to your inner child, your heart's true expression, your creativity, your love life, who you love, like who you love. And you may or may not be in a relationship with who you love. So it's like romantic love. It's love for your children. It is your children, your relationship to your children, relationship to your creations. And what I call the golden egg at the very top of the fifth house, which is like your personal dreams, which you wish, wish upon a star for. So the fifth house is the star, is the house of expression and stardom, where we are a star, where we shine the most, where we twinkle. Now, can you relate that back to five being Gemini and Gemini is all about? Yeah, that's the weird thing is the houses are not. So the house numbering do not associate with the, with the steps from what I okay. found. Okay, um, okay. Just, just a yeah. question. Because uh, you said yeah. it's a fair question. And Geminis are all about shiny things. Yeah, and you know, I don't, I don't even know. I think that num I don't know who numbered the chart per se um, yeah. and, and what house you know, end up getting numbered well, what? It could have been Let's different. find that person and punish them. Yeah, yeah let's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure, but that's the one thing that is a little confusing is this, the, the house number does not associate. And there's other systems, like there are astrologers that call the first house zero and the last house yeah. 11 too. Um, sure, fair enough. So, so it, now it, we go to six. Six is, uh, is Virgo. So six is Virgo. It is your health. It is your body. It is the embodiment of the soul. So what's interesting is the opposite sides of the house play are actually in relationship to one another. So just to make a context here. So the sixth house is 
how you embody. That's your daily life, your day-to-day, -day, your lifestyle, the way you work, the tools you use. You know, are you a nine to five person? Are you a 10 to seven person? Um, it is also uh, the ability to heal. So if you need to heal from something, that's also six house stuff. It is also your ability to perform. So like a, you'll find major athletes have their son in the sixth house or like am amazing surfers have their son in the sixth house. Right, right. That's and, interesting. And it's, and it's opposite <laughs> of the 12th, which is spirit. So really, really there are, only six houses and their polarities of one conscious stream. Sure, fair, fair statement. So, so yeah. then we go to seven, seven which is, is then polarity is, back to Aries. Yeah, so Aries is, you know, Aries is the expression of I and seven is the expression of we. So right now we're in a seventh house moment here. It is the relationship. Seven is your relation between two things. And the relationship itself has its own energy, which is the seventh house. So how you relate to others, how you relate to yourself, that's what I call the mirage, the first section. Then how you relate to others, how you relate to your environment, how do you relate to substances? So people are highly allergic to something. They actually might have um, you know, an issue in the second decan of the seventh house, their allergy, because they don't relate well to that particular substance or person. Right. And then the long, the high version of the seventh house is partnerships, marriages and self mastery. So someone who masters a craft like Houdini might have had something in the third decan of the seventh house. He was a master of what he did, a master of his craft. So my uh, he pushed it to do levels. So my twenty nine is makes me Virgo by number and Sagittarius, which is opposite to Pisces and my Chiron is in Pisces. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You're coming from a very Pisces, your Chiron's in Pisces. So you were all spirit before and not practicality. And that's your wound. And being a 29 means you flip the script and now you want to get to the, to the body. The literally you move from the spirit to the body and it, it's all about body for you. Yeah. It, yeah. 29 it, is it, the body. It feels like that too. It really does. I think the human body is 20, number 29. Well, I've come to believe that. We are spirit expressing ourselves in this world. <clears throat> And I, I think the body is going back to your definition, the ego responding to feelings. Like yeah. that's what 29 is, uh, you know, the, you, you, a response to feeling. It sounds like, you know, from your neural net, you're talking about with uh, emotion. That's exactly the case that it's, it's serving as the, the cause and the re, nine is the effect. Cause and okay, effect. That makes sense. 29. So yeah. now we go to that eight. The eight house is the house of zero, the house of nothingness. So, it's sort of interesting. There is a state of awareness that is comp that is all a non-state of awareness, and that's Scorpio. Scorpio is nothing. <laughs> Scorpio is zero. Scorpio is the idea of nothing, which sounds generic, but really you need space. Space is a huge part of everything, right? So it is our person. It turns out to be our personal boundaries, how we shape and and how we define our space, basically. So how we define our time, how we define our space. Where is the limit? What are my limits with myself? So people who have uh, problems with drug substance abuse, they might have an issue in the first decade of the eighth house that they can't draw boundaries with themselves. They have like Pluto there, for instance, which would be the epitome of that. Someone who has no boundaries and just, go, you know, tramples all over themselves or tramples over others. The second decade would then be boundaries on a more sophisticated level, like the boundary between two people, sexual boundaries. Um, and then the high decade, third part of we like the big boundaries like the boundary between life and death the boundary between retirement and working the boundary between divorced and married the real big lifelong lasting boundaries right uh and so the the eighth, the, the eighth is your potential for transformation a lot of times people cannot change because they are not good with the boundaries right they don't know how to change change where the wall is and they only like know to live to live within that's why i find that um that the first thing we teach people is boundaries but we teach them boundaries to themselves like like if i'm going to do something that hurts my body like i eat 100 percent chemical free because if i going to do something that breaks a boundary with my body my body there's no way that any chemical coming in here is good for me then from there i'm willing to break other boundaries oh yeah exactly yeah Oh yeah, I think, and that's the case with the Deccans. Like, if you don't do it with yourself, you're not going to do it with other people. Like, yeah. you know, you you ha that 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 is based. The only way you can hold a boundary with someone in the world is that you can hold that boundary with yourself. If you can't hold a boundary with yourself, people are going to scroll right over you. So it's interesting. People born in the '80s have Pluto in Scorpio. So people born in the '80s are 
their souls are very new to boundaries. They are used to being dominated in past lives or dominating others in past lives. So they are, uh, that's, that's the millennials. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, for sure, absolutely. Their eighth house sort of ruled. So okay, so ninth house, ninth house is? Your favorite. Um, it is belief structure. And belief is, uh, so this is what you believe about yourself, what you believe about life, and what you believe about the future or about the essence of life. So it is all the meaning, all the purpose, all the story, the plot, the characters, um, the the aspects that you take. So it's sort of the archetypes. Because Sagittarius is sort of how things sort of archetype, which is how many different facts come together to form sort of a system of belief. So it's like a school of thought. So this is where you find people being having religious dogma or people going to school forever. If you have people with Saturn in the ninth house, like they're going for their second PhD, like they're overeducated, yeah. um, or they're big travelers. Traveling is also considered education because it's the exposure to new ideas. It's and the new ultimate cultures. education. It's the one that yeah. we're not taught to do. That's why they're restricting our traveling. Yeah, because it keeps you very narrow minded. Yeah. It keeps you um, when you see it's when you see someone from a different you know world that's just like you. It really builds a lot of um, tolerance for others and also yeah. tolerance for yourself. And you realize, hey, maybe I'm being hard on myself, or you know, why can't I be this way? So yeah, yeah. Sag is ninth house is your belief and purpose. And the ninth house is very defining to a person. People yeah. tend to not let go of their that's, beliefs. Pretty rare. Me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's um, me too for the most part. Then we move <laughs> like to very, 10. Yeah, you too, absolutely. 10 is long term commitment, basically. So it is when you commit to something. So it's your self discipline. Uh, in the first second, how well do you commit to yourself? Oh, I'm going to change my diet. And the next day you don't do crap about it. Well, that's an issue with the first decan of the 10th house. Uh, your long-term commitments in your career. So your your long-term strategies, your goals, your legacy, uh, your leadership potential, who you allow to lead you, your leadership style, and also like retirement. Like what are your plans for the end? What are your plans for your destination? So, you know, the ninth and 10th house is very much what you believe and what you're committing to, the ninth and 10th. And the, and the fourth and third is what you think and what you feel about life. So the foundation of life is what you think and feel. And the uh, expression of life is what you believe and what you commit to. And that's how the houses oppose each other. And, you know, to see, so like belief, the 10th house is career and the fourth house is family. So we all know career and family are opposite uh, expressions in our life. You know, the ninth house is belief and the third house is thought. So what you think and what you believe. So they, they're really, again, they're, they're um, opposites of the same we, spectrum. We've been, we've been doing, what we've been doing in our lifestyle is bringing all of those six together, like uh, our family and our career together. Because what I found was the separation was what was everything that was between the first six and the second six, all the indifference lands in the body as dysfunction. And then when we bring them together, marry them together, we don't have the dysfunction. I think it's brilliant. I think that's exactly how one ought to manage it because, uh, you know, oppositions, if they're both pointing in opposite directions and that creates ten tension, tension creates friction and resistance, resistance creates inflammation, inflammation cr creates disease, right? So, yeah. so the way you, so what's interesting is you use the opposite house to manage each other. So how do I manage my beliefs with certain thinking? How do I manage my thinking with certain beliefs? Yeah. How do I manage my career with my, with my home needs? How do I manage my home? Uh, I don't get caught in things at home because I have places to go at work. So right. you use the opposite or you can use it to the state of awareness. So the 10th house is I decide when I make a decision, what is the opposite of a decision? What I feel. So right. a feeling leads to a decision. A decision affects your feelings. There's a paradoxical relationship between the two. Uh, so so, so we move on to a, uh... 11 now 11 is i belong which is aquarius which is where everything belongs so it is society it is neighborhoods it is geography it is what class are you in are you a blue collar worker are you a white collar green collar worker um are you you know in the high economic status are you in the low economic status are what's your race you know your your uh what is your affinity for religion so it's sort of how the world organizes where everything organizes your world it's your own personal how you friend yourself which is interesting the first decan is how are you a friend to yourself um and then the next decan is well how are you a friend to the world how do you relate to the world 
And then how do you, how are you seen by the world is the third deck and your world reputation. So it's branding, it's marketing, it's um, campaigning. If you're a politician is the 11th house. And usually people, you know, I have Saturn in the 11th house. So I'm an authority in society. That's the role I play an authority of astrology in this case. Yeah. Right. And then last but not least, 12. Is the 12th house, the house of mystery, the house of karma, the house of delusion. Um, it is ultimately your subconscious. And I believe your subconscious is the gateway to your, your uh, meta conscious. So I believe that we have to go through the 12th. So it is your own personal faith in your subconscious and your dreams. Like you're literally falling asleep and dreaming in the first decan. The next decan is your spiritual agreements. So you've agreed in this lifetime to, you know, face certain issues of inadequacy. This is what we known as karma. Karma is really your spiritual memory. So this is the conscious of what is my spiritual memory? I have this spiritual history, lifetime after lifetime of this or that. And so the 12th house serves as the basement, so to speak. It is the consciousness that's underneath all these other states of awareness. And the high degrees of uh, Pisces is I call the eye of God. And that is your relationship to the higher realms. So if you're here to ascend or you're here to talk to the angels or you're here to bridge heaven and earth, you'll have some planets there in that final. Oh, what's that? That's, that's the eye of crystal. God. That's <laughs> the eye go. of God from Vizella. I thought it was a compact disc at first. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. that's the eye of God. Actually, I carry it with me. So, um, so okay, this is awesome. Now, now, now this brings me to my question. Okay. Is, <laughs> is that this is why your service and the messages seem like they are so accurate because the house system is, is the lens in which those messages are sent through, right? Yes. Yeah. That is that is the truth. Uh, it varies, to be honest. I, I'll change the perspective of the messages, but yes, the house is all the time. So right now we have a feature in our pep talks called Astrodynamics, where we have this extra recorded piece for you in the daily pep talk. We base that on the houses. So we base that on where the planet is right now in your where planets are transiting in your current house. Right. And those are called those are called transits. So you have these houses, and then you have the planets moving through these houses. And that is the, that's where you're being triggered. And so we look at that and we give you an analysis of where you're being triggered, why. So And, and, and the other part too is being able to, what I love about the app is, um, is uh, being able to monitor my tribe, my people around me. Oh yeah, that is a feature we have. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we have, allow you to have up to 10 other people you can track in the app, just giving their date of birth and time of birth. And it's really I good for like moms watching kids and family. It's also good like here's a hack here's a hack you might like is like i have my solar eclipse in there as one you might put a doppelganger oh, in there as another oh one. that's awesome i track other sides of my own personality so i have a solar eclipse in capricorn so i have the solar eclipse as my past life version of me and where my past life story is so yeah there's little things you can do yeah people are asking about the app you can go into our uh you go to our website under our partners and you get serious joy you can sign up for the app it's four dollars 3.99 for the first month if you don't like it go off it my guess is you're going to be so amazed and enamored by it you're going to wonder you're going to think that uh that chris has got google and the because the messages are going to be right at the right time you're going to be talking about something you're going to message you're going to go holy shit. there's a synchronicity there I personally think that we're working with heaven on this app, like um, in the sense that because something tells you to go look at your phone at that moment, which is really interesting. Like there's a part of yourself because there's messages that you might miss. It's like you get seven in a day. You're on a conference call. You know, you can't get to your phone, but you fun suddenly grab the phone for some reason and like, holy shit, like it's right on the mark. Hey, guys, um, I also want to recommend people. Should, it's like go to go to the. Uh, um, um, we have no financial arrangement, but I like to know who people are going through the human garage portal. So go through, go to our website and, um, and go in there and register there. And I, I, what I, what I feel we're going to be doing in the future is adding a body component to everybody yes. who is signed up. And we're going to be sending messages that are specific to what you can do in your body during like, like it's an energy that. alert for the next. 30 for the next three hours, you're going to feel like this, do this stress reset, do this uh, organ reset to balance it off. That's where, that's why I want people to, to go through because what we, what I recognize is the power of the system you created to individually give messages to people that help them understand and balance the world out. 
And then what I've learned over the years is how all of that relates to the human body. And eventually we want to map that back in. I, I cannot wait for that, brother. And not only that, but you're decoding also. When we talk about your natal chart, you could, we're, you're probably going to decode the predispositions to situations. We are. Actually, and the body's actually, predisposition. We, I've, got, yeah. I've got those. I can tell you... Um, I can tell you why you have issues in your, in your body or what issues you're likely to have, what you can do to prevent them, or if you have them, how to get over them. Because some people have pains or dysfunction in their body and they try everything physically. And, you know, Human Garage was built on people who had tried everything else in the world and didn't work. So yeah. we were over on the other side saying, okay, well, we want to do this astrology thing. Are you okay with that? And it was like, well, I tried everything else, so why not? And we were able to build an intelligence because because it worked. And, yeah. and because people... People had tried everything else that didn't work. And that's part of what our working together. I believe that that as we blend this together, we're going to have the, the most complete system of understanding how to use astrological forces and how to balance our bodies against it. I think it's brilliant. And, and I think you've proven that you can fix the body on the outside and then it'll snap back. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't understand the essence that led to that issue, uh, then, then you're going to snap back to the hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the time people, they, they want to say, fix my body. I can fix. I, I took a scoliosis online uh, a month ago, a 20, I don't know, four degree or something like that and repaired it all within an hour, completely back. And the challenge is if that, I mean, that girl had been doing the program, working in the, uh, the 28 day reset lifestyle artist, managing emotions, thoughts, working with astrology. So she's not gone back. But if I did that, uh, you just go right back to where you were because eventually the lessons and the emotions are coming back in and those are what's going to affect your body at the end, no matter what your disease is. Yeah. And I think another fascinating thing is a lot of times those issues go back, I think, to past life injuries. So I have a lot of yeah. clients who, oh, yeah, for who sure. break their arm and like I, I get a vision that they lost their arm in like the Civil War. And they're like, oh my God, I've broken that arm four times. I'm like, yeah, yeah this, you're lucky it's not cut off this time. About it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, yeah, at least this time you I can agree heal. That because there are there are certain when you're working with the human body, we're we're in a fluid adaptive biological computing system, which means that it should work if it's all science and it's all numbers, it should work every time the same. If you're in our lifestyle artist program, I wrote a piece, I channeled a piece called Every Soul Has a Purpose, where uh, I describe uh, how I think um, past lives interact with this life in our body today. And it was, it was my, it was for me to explain why I couldn't fix my body physically. And, and I, tried, I tried every, you know, I mean, I've, I've got 35 years and millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars now trying to fix certain things that I never fixed. And I'm like, there has to be a reason there, there is no accident. Everything in this body has an action reaction. So if it's not fixing, it's because something I'm missing. And if that's something I'm missing, if I've eliminated every possible uh, avenue in this world, then it had to come from another world. And I was trying, not trying. I wanted to explain to myself how a past life thing could come in. Like, for example, I was five years old. I saw a coffin. I freaked out, but I, I, I didn't have a TV. I didn't know what a coffin was. Mm. How did I know to freak out? That had to come from somewhere, and that viscerally affected me in this life. So that means that somewhere that came from. I mean, again, there was no magazines. There was no TV. There was no way for me to know at five years old what a coffin was. Right. And you have that, you have that subconscious memory, right? I feel like what, what karma is, is a, that the soul, what disease is, is the soul is still pissed off about something that's happened basically to us. Yeah. And we, we are obsessed with like, with finishing the puzzle. Like yeah. we, we can't put it down. So this is why you fix the body. You didn't solve the puzzle. So you're going to go right back and mess it up again and make it diseased until you figure out what that puzzle piece was. And until we solve the puzzle, we can't rest. And, That's, and you know, free will is the realization and either action or non-action against the plan we came here. We already created. You're on the, so on people think on it's, the same exact page, brother. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, it's like, you think you got free will. It's a thousand decisions that you made up to that point where you say, I want my free will. And I'm like, eh, you're in that, you're asking that question because you're in the wrong spot already. Our free will is in heaven. When we are drugged by spiritual opiates yeah. and we are feeling so happy that we would have had signed up for every fucking attraction that there was on earth. It's like, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> sure, oh, sure. masochistic beating. I'll take that one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me about that it. Cancer. I'll take that. Yeah. I haven't experienced that. Give it to me. 
<laughs> exactly. And you're, you're totally all high with the angels and there's heart music you're, playing. So like, it seems like, like hey, a good time. Like, hey, dude, you're right on, man. You're taking a tough one this time. You're like, yeah. You get down there and you get out there and you go, what the fuck did I just sign up for? <laughs> exactly. That is exactly it. And people are like, I didn't sign up for this. It's like, I think you did. Yeah, you, you know, think that's, you did. That's the thing. So funny. You hey. know, I'll just say, we have um, we have 40 Days of Truth and Purpose starting at Scorpio Zero. Okay, how do they, uh, yeah, how do they register for that? So if they sign up for the app, like you've just said, it, it starts on Scorpio Zero. We're going to walk people through every crevice of their chart. And you're going to oh, find right. what your you're going to find what your truth is and you're going to find what your purpose is. I'm going to sign up for that actually. You sh I think you should I like your I would like your feedback. Yeah, yeah I'm going to sign up for that. Uh, I would like I, to be able I really, to I'm at that stage now where I'm 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 focused on like I I don't put any energy on something until I'm going to learn it. That's why I kept coming you asking everything for all the years. But now I'm like no. I've read I've read like uh 2000 charts in this last uh, 18 months. And I'm like, no, I really want to understand this now. I, I want to understand why and how and all that. So this is the best way. And for people who want to be astrologers, who are astrologers, this is the best way to learn the step system. Because when you see how it works on you and you know from your own life, ah, ah that makes sense. Well, that's that's our, then it, our whole point is is our whole program is don't don't tell me about it. Experience it and then tell me what you experience. Because I don't want to I don't want to know what you know anymore. I want to know what you experience. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I think that's the most important thing because that's what you're manifesting. That's like the active spell, yeah. if you will. Yeah. So I think it's going to be powerful. And uh, if you start, if you sign up now, you'll have like a, a lead into it. So but when we hit the 40 days, it'll be okay, good. Chris, yeah, Chris, it's been awesome talking to you this week. I can't wait. This week's going to be a barn burner. Looking forward to it. It is, brother. Send me a text message as it burns down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Can't wait to see you next week. See you next love, week. love and grace. Take Thank care. you, brother. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, great, everybody. Um, these will be uh, put on the wall. And if you want to learn the predecessor to this, go to last week's um, Astro Monday, and you can learn about the step system, which is what we're talking about. And then we talked about the houses today. What we're doing is taking step by step and helping you understand the things in a new way. Um, if you can go to our website, humangarage.net, and then you go to our partners, you can sign up for Serious Joy. Please sign up through us. There's not a financial commitment. We're not, we're not getting paid for it. What we want you to do is we want to know who you are. We want to track you because what we want to do is we want to start adding in how to work the body on this later on. And if you're, if you're, a, if you're a subscriber and you got it through us in the first place um, and you did and you got it from them directly, just go back and let them know to switch you over onto our side, just so we know. Um, so we, so we have an idea of where you came from. Okay. Um, we have been partnering with serious joy since the beginning. Um, this is my seventh year, I think, on the on the app. It's been fantastic. My life has changed immensely. This is different than other apps. I do. I, I, there's other apps that I do use. One of them is called The Pattern, and it's about conversations. And I use that in conjunction with this. And there, you know, and and it allows me to talk a little bit different. But this app is seven messages a day that are specific for you with all kinds of background resources. You can literally become a full-fledged astrologer just by just by going through and learning in the app. So we're going to have this again next week um, with Serious Joy. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of other stuff coming up. Uh, so for right now, we're going to see you guys tomorrow morning, uh, our live. Guys, I don't know if you can feel it, but I feel excited. World's changing. This is what I came for. This is what I signed up on this planet for. So... I'm excited to be here. I'm excited you're here with me. I'm excited that you're in this journey and you're watching it with me. Have a great day, everybody.